and welcome to Tonic Studios. I'm Leah. I'm here today with Alison. Hello. We're back with another Tonic Tuesday for you where we bring you tips, techniques and tutorials and today is all about papercraft flowers. Today's Tonic Tuesday, we're going to bring you everything you've ever needed to know about papercraft flowers. How to make them, how to shape them, how to assemble them, different ways of doing them. And of course, if you have any questions as you're going along through the video, pop them into the comments below and we will come back to you with some answers. So the very first thing we want to talk about is just very quickly some of the tools that we would recommend that you use when it comes to making flowers and thankfully yeah. we sell quite a few of those funnily <laughs> enough here at Tonic Studios. So first of all we have... We have our Paper Crafters Toolkit. So there's everything in here that you're going to need to make any of the flowers you can see in front of me. So let's get them out, is there? let's make a start. There we are. So it's a handy little storage case they come in, so mm -hmm. keep them in there if you want to. And then we have, let me take that away. So we have our florist foam for starters. So this is a really squidgy foam. It allows you to shape your flowers, it allows you to press into them, mm -hmm. to make your petals, oops, all come upwards. Mm -hmm. Makes your shaping easier, I fancy, with that. Yep. Then we have ball tools of various sizes. And they're double-ended. So we have from teeny tiny, and I mean, that's probably about three mil. Like if that, yeah. Two mil, maybe. Then we have slightly thicker. Then you flip these over. You've got slightly bigger. So go smaller. Going bigger with these two. And then you have the big daddy of them all. Obviously, the smaller the tool, the smaller the flower, the smaller size tool you're gonna need. Mm -hmm. The bigger the flower, you know, you may be making flowers as big as a dinner plate, then obviously you're gonna need the larger tool. Yes. And you've also got a reverse action tweezer. Or squeezer, as I like to call them. You do. To differentiate, you, you have tweezers that you pinch to hold and squeezers that you squeeze to open them and then they hold themselves. They do. And it gives you another hand. It does. That's the, the joy of these, I think. Because if you're gluing little bits on and you have got something... Let me just pick this up. Sorry, I ruined your flower display. <laughs> you could be inking something as teeny tiny as that. Your finger is going to take up half the flower, mm -hmm. but your little squeezer is not. So you could just ink around Perfect. that tiny little thing. But it also allows you to shape your petals mm -hmm. as well. So I think it's a fabulous, fabulous idea. So that's a great tool set. That's the first tool that we recommend. The next one then is our quilling tool. And this has two different sizes. So different flowers may require a different size and that may take a little bit of trial and error. If you've got quilling flowers that are along a strip and you've got petals along that strip, try each end because sometimes you'll find that all the petal and e petals end up on one side. Mm -hmm. If you use a different size starter, the quill on the end, then they may move themselves around into an even pattern. And we will show you that in practice. Absolutely. When we get to doing some raw so give that later. a go. And then the last thing is, of course, our amazing hot glue gun. And a glue oh, gun. Yes. Um, we would recommend, in general, using hot glue rather than, say, our deluxe for forming flowers. You want a very instant Definitely. grab. Definitely. You don't want to be holding your flower while your glue dries. Mm -mm. You want something that's going to grab straight away and set pretty much instantly. Especially when you're doing tiny, teeny, flowers. tiny rolled flowers like this. 
If you, you can have to, not be holding them. No, exactly. And if you're trying to pinch them while the glue, you're going to squeeze them and squash them. You're going to lose some of the shape yeah. that you've put so much time and effort into making. Absolutely. So definitely hot glue would be our recommendation over a liquid glue for forming flowers. Of course, you can do it with liquid glue. It is just going to take longer for them to set for you. So those are some of the tools that we recommend. So um, as always, any of the tools and things that we're mentioning today are all gonna be linked in the comments below. So if you want to find anything that we're talking about, check in there and you'll have a link in there for you. So first of all, we're gonna show you how to make a flower without using the dye. So what are we going to use? So this is the flower that I have made. It's just a very simple ro rolled rose. That was a very difficult bit to say. And it is stunning. Um, but very quick and easy to do. And as Al says, this is done without a dye. So all I'm going to need for this is a sheet of your paper, cardstock, material of choice. Because you really can do this with any of them. Yeah, you could do that out of felt or anything. You could, you? absolutely. I have chosen a piece of our foam around. Um, it's this kind of very thin foam material, great for flowers and other kind of things that you want to have 3D and texture mm. to them. And you just need to start with a rough square. So I'm going to, how big should I make this? Should we just do a square off? Oh, are you going for it? No, let's not do that. <laughs> I thought you were going to go for a dinner plate size then. Almost, almost. And that is the beauty of doing flowers without a dye. You can make them as big or as small as you yeah. want them to be. So I have a rough square of foam around. Taking my trusty scissors, I'm going to now cut this into a rough circle, which is why I started with a square. Because it's easier to get a circle out of a square than it is out of a rectangle. But it doesn't actually matter if it isn't perfectly circular. It doesn't matter if the edges are wavy, that is just going to add to your flower. So there is my very rough circle. And now comes the fun part. So you're going to want to slice in. You've got to be brave when you start that for this <laughs> haven't you? And you are just going to basically cut this into a spiral. Um, bearing in mind that the wider your spirally pieces the wider your petals are going to be and the bit that you start is the middle of the flower so if you think you probably want the middle to be smaller and get bigger on the outside or you may want it a different way around you may want to make this wavy on the edge and of course you can do that if you want to so just keep cutting and cutting Spiraling your circle. <laughs> Until you get roughly to the middle and you want to leave yourself a little bit like so. It's like a little snail at the bottom. It isn't is. It? Like you, a snail house. you don't want to go right to the end. You don't want to end up with a tiny little sliver. You definitely want a piece because that's going to be the base of your flower. And if I just turn this over so I can explain, this is where you're going to anchor and glue your flower closed. So you need that piece to be a good size. Yes. So you've got somewhere to glue everything to, basically. You don't want to be burning those fingers. Definitely not. So I'm going to take our quilling tool for this. And I'm going to use the thick end. Now, because this is foam around and it is a bit chunky, I do need to just press the edge just to squeeze it a bit so it actually fits in. So this is a standard quilling tool, exactly as if you were quilling with mm. paper. There's no different. You've got a little slit in the end that you just feed. One side is slightly thicker than the other, though, it is. isn't it? It is, yeah. So I'm just going and to And the feed. barrel is thicker. It is, which is going to give you, obviously, a thicker middle or a thinner middle depending mm. on which one you use so i have put my foam around into the quilling tool so you can see it through there and i'm literally now just going to roll this and you want to try and keep the bottom edge all in a line on the barrel as much as possible <laughs> <laughs> it um, sometimes can be a bit of an impossible task but just go slowly. If you need to unravel and re-ravel a bit, then you can. It is very forgiving, though, for Mariah, it is. isn't it? It is. And you want to keep a good amount of tension on this because you want this to be reasonably tight. You don't want this to be a loose coil yet. You can slacken it off at the end, but when you're first rolling it, I like to keep it pretty much as tight as it'll go. And then you I just love a rolled flower. keep rolling and rolling. 
This one is still going to be a fairly big flower, even it from is. that little square. Okay. I mean, I don't know whether you can see on the desk. We have got a couple that we've made with dies as well. Mm -hmm. So while this is rolling, obviously we are doing this without a die because papercraft is for everyone. If you don't have a Absolutely. die cutting machine, give it a go. Give it a go. Make yourself some flowers. You can make as many of these you want. And like I said, you can make them as big or as small as you want them to be. But if you want to have a consistent finish, if you want them to be a bit quicker to make, then we would recommend a die. That's the difference, mine, between a die and cutting yourself, isn't yeah. it? With a die, every single flower is going to be identical. Yeah. And if that is what you want, then you need something like a die or a template or something. If you don't mind anything being a little bit random, maybe like your petals are going up and mm -hmm. down, then cut it yourself. But I think that is the option that you have between a die and your own cut. Exactly. Is that uniformity? It is, definitely. So I've come to the end. You can see I've just got my little end piece here. So I'm going to pull all of this carefully off my cutting tool. Hopefully mm. not unraveling the middle too much. Poke it back That's in. That's only a little bit. Yeah, we can poke that back in. That's fine. And then this piece is just going to tuck underneath. So this is how we're going to finish off our flower. So this is how it looks at the moment. I don't want to let it go too much because I don't want it to completely unravel. Although foam run is quite nice. It doesn't unravel. Um, if you try this with different types of paper and other mediums, some will unravel quicker yeah. than others. Paper and cardstock will... Whoop, as soon as it's you just gone. yeah, as soon as you release the tension, it will just kind of droop and be a lot bigger than it was. It reminds so. me of that coil tape measure. Yes, it's just it, gone, it isn't it? Snaps Your back. whole coil is gone. <laughs> so I'm going to pop my glue gun on, and you can you know tease this out a little bit. So if you want to add a little bit more space between your petals, you can very gently just unroll this to go the opposite direction. If you want them to be a little bit looser, a little bit more open, then you can. Okay, so let's get some glue onto here. Hopefully we are now warm enough. And you want to try and make sure that you get enough glue that it's gonna hold all of the coils. You don't want any of them to poke up. So pop that onto there and I'm gonna then close my little flap over the top pinch it all into place and again I'm sort of squidging the glue around making sure it covers yeah. all of the different pieces just give it a few seconds to dry that is very pretty though Whoop, I'm stuck to my finger. So there is my little foam around rose. And then if you want to add color, you can do it before you roll it. So while you've got your spiral, you can just go around the edge. You can add some ink. You could spritz it with a spray. You could go over with some watercolor pencils or alcohol markers, anything you want to add color. All I've done, I just had a blending door, but that had a bit of color still on it from where I was using it from another project. And I kind of just buffed the edges. So obviously it's a little bit... Audio? cheats now i am the little hacks away there's obviously a lot less color on it now than there was last time i used it but you can just add a tiny little bit of pink edging to that and obviously add more ink add more if you want to and generally with flowers the center is going to be darker so you want to yeah. concentrate your color in the centers um and sort of on the base of the petals or edge of the flowers and then it gets paler as it comes up the side very pretty so that is my very simple rolled flower so now we have another flower that you can make without any dyes just with a circle so what have we got leo so here is pretty much the almost fully formed I don't even know what you would call this. I guess it would be similar to a peony if you had done bigger. Yes. You know, the kind of very ragged looking peonies and things like that, or just a generally puffy flower. This one has actually been done with tool, tool, however you want to say that, netting. Um, <laughs> and all I have done is cut probably about 30 circles of netting type material. If I just try and unscrunch this one so you can see. So it's just a very, not loose circle so again it doesn't even have to be perfect for this in fact the more imperfect the better yeah. and all i've done is sort of pinch it at the center of the circle 
Flowers are never perfect. Or... They're not at all. And I think that's the nice thing about yeah. making paper flowers or not paper flowers, as some of these are, is that they don't have to be perfect. No, they don't. If they've got a little extra crinkle, or even if you've got a little rip, if you've ripped off a petal, it's probably not going to be an issue. You've got so many petals there, you're not even going to notice it. Exactly. So the, all I've done with this, like I say, I've pinched my circle into a sort of point in the middle. I'm going to add a tiny-ish bit of hot glue onto the <laughs> end. Be brave. Be brave. So I've just got a little bit of hot glue in there. And then all I've been doing is just sticking into the center. So I started off with just sticking two together and then going around and making sort of a flat circle. And then I built it up, always sticking into the same central point. So all of your glue is in one central piece, basically. You could add a few sequins onto that. You could, you, you could. I was thinking a quick spritz with some sparkle spray. Yes. You know, a very light misting. Um, would be lovely and then once the glue has set you can literally just go around and fluff up all of your little petals separate them all out that and is so pretty all I've then done is just glued it onto a piece of florist wire again with some hot glue in the center so it's another very simple flower that you can make very pretty and you can do that with anything you could do it with tissue paper with felt again yeah I think vellum would work nicely I probably wouldn't go any heavier than that because you're going to have struggle to get the scrunch into yes. the centre of the circle. So yeah. definitely a finer material. Maybe would be a best book best. paper as well. Yes, that would be nice. That would be a lovely one to do with well. book papers. So a couple of very quick ideas for you without dies. Next up then, we're going to show you how to form flowers. So Alison is our resident <laughs> expert florist, uh, paper florist, I should say, uh, which is why we are definitely deferring to her ultimate wisdom and knowledge for this. So let us know what you're gonna do. There are generally only two ways that I would say I would shape a flower. And then the rest of it depends on the dye, the shape of the petals on the dye, and the material that you use. So if you have a little look, if you have a look down on these, all these flowers here are made with one single dye. So going from, let's have a little look, from that flower that looks like a ranunculus to me, that is very, very tightly coiled together, right out to um, this one. They are done with exactly the same die set. I'll tell you what all these are made with. And why didn't I write on that when I'm any <laughs> They have. So on the bottom end. They've got a bit more movement to them, haven't they? They have. They have. So on the bottom I've written. They've got a bit more movement to them, haven't they? They have. They have. So on the bottom I've written how many. They've got a bit more movement to them, haven't they? They have. They have. So on the bottom I've written how many. They've got more movement to them, haven't they? They have. They have. So on the bottom, I've written how many petals. So this is four small die, uh, sm four small dies, four large dies. So the ones I've used. Let me bring this out. So it's the flawless flower creations, and it's the zinnia die set. Don't just stick to this one though. Have a little look at the other dies as well. So I've used four of the large one four of the small one and it's only these two dies and that one for a couple that I've used so ignore those two so this one was made with paper and I kind of think I've done possibly four small and six large on there but because it's paper it kind of scrunches in a little bit smaller mm -hmm. this one Again, very similar, but you can see more definition in the petals. That one is done with our Craft Perfect 216 GSM. This is the vellum done with four small, six large. And this is done with six small and eight large. So you can see it, you can go as big, as small as you like. It depends if you think it's worth adding in those extra layers. Mm -hmm. It may be for some projects and not for others. 
I guess bear in mind the project you're putting onto. If you Absolutely. want to put a card, you probably don't want to put you know You've done. 16 layers of petals onto the front of a card. It's going to make it a bit front heavy. You may think you'd rather have a flattish flower mm -hmm. and that has two small layers, two large layers and it's also got the centrepiece there. And again, that is exactly the same in vellum. But it's just softer, it's gentler. Mm -hmm. Depends on what you want to make. You can also die cut felt. Now this is not the wool felt. Um, this is the one, you know, the children's felt. Yeah. It doesn't die cut as well. There are a few little fronds on there of felt. The wool felt cuts a lot better. But again, it's a lot more costly. So you kind of weigh it all up, don't you? So that is one layer of each. One small, one large. Then coming in again, this is our pearl card. Now this is a more open, more blousy um, dye flower. Because the card doesn't move as much. Mm, it's, it's a very a... thicker card. Yeah. It sticks to where you've put it. It's not going to move. And this one is six small, six large. And then we've gone on to a little bit of foam around here. And this is four small petals, four large petals. And you can see it's very soft. It will squash in my hand. It looks like a completely different flower it does. as well. It does. And I'll show you how we've, we've kind of made them all. Give you a little idea. And then we've gone to tissue paper. And these are just the large petals and you add, keep adding and adding and adding until you've got enough. So, let me show, oh, that's the other one I didn't show you. This has been very, very naughty. It was an old book that was damaged because I definitely wouldn't be cutting up a proper book. Mm -hmm. But you can pick them up in the charity shop. Mm -hmm. This one had the aged edge into it and I think that added to it. You can ink them, but I don't think it's the same. I like that little bit of aging. It's really nice. And this is six six small and eight large flowers. Right, let me take the flowers away. And how did I create them? Let me move all these out the way. Petal. So three. Three no, I've got three. I won't do six, you'll be bored. <laughs> we'll do three. Three small no, I've got three. I won't do six, you'll be bored. <laughs> we'll do three. Three small, three large. So bring your ball tool, put it on your, your foam mat, and all I do is bring the tool down. To matter if you go back up or down. Just do a little bit of a scribble. And it kind of, if you can see that one petal there now, it curls and it makes it like a little cap. Mm. And just keep going like that. There is no secret to making these flowers, believe you me. Oh, I don't know. Karen and I were baffled. <laughs> we had no idea. We've, we've been waiting for this video ourselves for a very long time so oh, we could understand. I don't have a secret. I really don't. You know when you've just made something and you know that works for you? Mm -hmm. This is what worked for me from the beginning and that's what I've carried on doing. So that then makes a little cap. It's almost like a fairy cap. And then go round the middle to bring your petals in a little bit more. And that's my first one. So I'll do the others a little bit quicker. So just pull your ball tool down. And I'm using one of the larger ball tools. It's not the largest, but one of the larger ones. Because it's a thick card and if I went to the small end, let me show you, it wouldn't do anything. No. It gives me a little bit of a crease on the corner and that is it. Not enough for this size flower. So let's just bring those down. There we are. Make a crease in the middle as well. Or well, not a crease, a line. Because that helps to cap the petal a bit more. There we are, nearly done. 
And doing this also helps to kind of break down the fibres in the paper, which is what makes it a bit more pliable. So a you know, flat sheet of paper, all the fibres are laying flat and nicely on top of each other. As you roll your ball tool around, you're kind of mashing them up a bit, moving them, yes. breaking them down so they're more flexible and pliable. And sometimes that is what we need. There we are. I mean, this one I literally am just scribbling on top <laughs> of it. Keep turning until you've done all your petals and you've got it as kept as you can. There we go. And a little bit on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to get some glue. There we are, excuse me. Sorry. It over. I knew I'd put it somewhere. So I'm using a wet glue this time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to squeeze in because this is the centre of my bud. Squeeze in your petals. Because this is quite a thick card, you're not going to get those to meet in the middle. But if you were using something um, like a card paper, mm -hmm. a thicker paper, then maybe you'd get them to meet in the middle. So you'd have a really tight bud. And then I'm just popping a little bit of glue around. You don't need to do it on them all. You just want it on the outside because they are going to hold all those petals in place. Give it a little bit of a squeeze for a while because you want it to have a little bit of a grab before you start again. And push it into the shape you want it to be. You want a rough circle. And then we'll put a little bit of glue into the next one. So press that inside I can move that out the way now so I can have a little bit more room this one I am going to put a bit of glue onto every petal I know the middle is opening you are going to give it a little bit more time but by the end oops it'll all be held together have I done them all? no mm -hmm. missed them okay so squeeze them together and then bring the next lot up. So you want to make sure that the centre is roughly in the middle. These petals are not going to come up as high. So if you look at the side, you can see these petals are not as high as the first ones. Because you're pulling out, you're going out towards. And you're going and around that's, the base as well. Yes. So you're taking up more space. Yeah, that makes sense. That's exactly as a flower would be. Mm -hmm. Because as they get bigger, they go out further, don't they? Think of a rose. Your bud is really tight in the middle, but you're out of flower, you're out of petals. There's there's really not much shape on them at all. So this one again, now I'm just gonna put a little bit of ink, not ink, <laughs> glue. The other one. The other one. And a bit in the centre. And pop this in the middle. And I'm just going to hold that. So that's three of my small layers of petals. There we are. So we'll hold that gently. Would you like me to hold that for you? You can do. Yeah, hold that. I shall do that. Lovely. Thank you very much. It's very so helpful to have an assistant. Absolutely it is. So we've done exactly the same now, but with the larger petals. And I'm going to kind of build this from the bottom up. So line it up so you've got the middle of the petal is on the join of the one underneath. So you kind of stagger in your petal slightly. If you think that they're not, mm, let me have a little look. Sometimes it depends on how your flower is cut. That's about it, I think. There we are. And then we're going to go to the next one. And we're going to pop another one in. As you can see, we've shaped all these first, but exactly the same. They've all been done the same as the small ones. And then the next one. And again, I'm trying to stagger them slightly. It doesn't matter if you don't. You know, if you forget and you've got two the same, it doesn't matter. So give that a little press. Pop another little bit of glue in the base. Thank you very much. 
and then in the middle then you pop your smaller petals when they dry you can give this a little squeeze and bring the outer petals in and that is the start of your flower yeah. and that's my starting point so what do we do if we want to make a different an outside flower let me have a little look right so i've got one of them and i've got two of these so i'm going to show you now how to make i'm looking for the flower i want and i want something like this so i'm turning the petals outwards so this is generally the two shapes that i would do i would curl the petals in and i would curl the petals out there are hundreds more shapes out there and please go and have a look for them. Um, but these are just giving you a starting point. So we're going to work on the back now of our die cut. And we're going to do a very, very, well, not very similar, the same motion. We're going to cut the flower, the petals, turn them around. And you get a different, you get a very open flower with this. And I think these are perfect for card making. But you can see I have used the same cardstock. But have a look what you've got in your craft box. You know when you've got those little scraps that you don't want to throw out? Then this is where you make your flowers out of. So if you just make a little dip in the middle... That may be as far as you want to go. You may only want one layer. Mm -hmm. And that would be perfect. But I'm going to do two large and one small. The other thing you could do, I'll bring in... I'll bring in the packaging in a sec. You could do some of the petals going outwards. Mm -hmm. To the curving out and then you can do the center curving in so that will give you another shape gives you more depth again you can make flowers out of copy paper mm -hmm. and they actually make i think these are copy paper actually uh, no i think these are a thinner paper so i've brought the bed in this is a different die but you can see I haven't changed the way I've made it. It depends on the petals you've got. So if you're needing any flower dyes, have a little look on the website. But also have a look what you've got as well. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you will find um, in the majority of our dye sets is that where we've made a box or some kind of 3D item, there are generally flower dyes on your die set as oh, well. That's the one I'm um, for. We don't like to give you blank space in your die set. We don't. Um, so our designers will often fill spaces with assorted flowers. So probably if you have a look back through a number of different box dyes and other dyes that we've done, you will find you've got quite Absolutely. a host of little flower dyes already that you could start building flowers with and I think this is a lovely thing that you could sit and do for a day just make oh, a whole host definitely. of flowers that are there ready for you to use well we've just had a route around the office today mm -hmm. um to see what flowers we've got left because sometimes we make a batch and we make in a couple of projects and then by the end of the batch we haven't used all the flowers that yep. we've got so that was where a lot of these flowers on the desk came from so all these petals are tweaked outwards the other thing you could do, let me bring that in, um, which I haven't shown. What did I do with the tweezers? Just over the side of the pink box. The other side of that. Oh, there we are. So take your tweezers as well. Take your petal. Hold your petal tight. And you can twist. So can you see that petal there now? It's got a lovely twist in there. So pop, pop your tweezers on, hold it and twist. And if you keep doing that and you make quite a layer of them, 
You could make like a carnation, couldn't you? You could do a mm -hmm. couple of these in a layer. But try different papers, try different textures. Um, if you've got a cotton mm -hmm. and a plain dye, our dyes will cut cotton for you. So if you're making soft furnishings, you could add them onto there. There we are. One thing we don't tell you how to do though is to sew your fabric because we use that's blue. Not we, me. we don't we don't sew. <laughs> I don't sew. So there we are, we can bring that one up. And you can also turn these down a little bit then. But you play, you see what shape you want on your petals. Have a good play. I mean that's one of those you know when it's a rainy day. Have you got snow where you are at the moment? Is it a bit grey and groggy? That's the day you want to spend in your craft room. If you don't have a project in mind, maybe sit and make some flowers. Sit and make some flowers, definitely. So that is exactly the same. A much, much flatter flower. But have a little play. The other thing you could do with this is, let me switch... Hang on, I've got everything stuck here. I'm going to switch the glue gun on for a sec. And we will pop. Oops. That was what I was going to show as well. I'm going to pop a centre into this one. I was going to show you formaran. Um, let me find a formaran flower. Because this shapes very differently. If you drag this, it is just going to rip. You can see we've got the same dies for all of these. Pull it downwards. Is it downwards? I've got to think now. Yes. And press. Because if you press, keep pressing and you kind of want to pull. Be careful you don't pull at the base because it will come off. But keep pressing. I'm going up the petal, but pressing it. And then you'll see, see you've got some shape in there on the petals. And they will, they will make that beautiful flower that I've just shown you here. Very, very pretty. So, take that one away. And we're going to pop a centre now into this little flower. So I'm going to put some hot glue in the centre. This is a favourite. If you followed our design team, this is a real favourite of Sue. Sue Hardman. She loves to pop in the centre of her flowers some little confetti or sequins. If I pop that in there, there we are. Give it a little press. Tip out what's left, and all those will be held, and you'll have a beautiful centre. So that's another idea for you. You could add crystal drops to the centre of these. Um, you could even ink and draw into the centre. Mm -hmm. If I show you the packaging, um, oh, I've lost that bit. If I bring this one in. So on this one, I've used the small little daisy. I think I've got three layers looking at that. And then I've added some ink and some pencil, I think I added, in the centre. And that was all I needed to finish that centre. But again, I've shaped these petals outwards. You could also shape them, if you didn't have a bowl tool, you could shape them with a bone folder. Just pull them all out towards. I gotta be honest, mind, I could not be without my bone fold, uh, my tools. This is just another technique. You can curl the edges to make it look more like a rose. So if you pull, you pull in the paper towards you. So 
Can you see that where it curls in from the outside? So I would do the straight up first and then I would curl my little corners for the petals. And again, the bone fold is helping you to break down the fibres in the paper. Absolutely. But I would still need my um, floral crafter set because I would want to do the centre. And I couldn't do that without the foam. Need something to press into. You definitely do. I mean, I've tried a phone book when we had phone books years ago. I've tried a mouse mat. I've tried various things, but nothing works as well as these foam pads. So I would definitely have this on my on my little shopping list. I think uh, I think I've outcrafted these flowers now. So that is the different flowers all using the same dye. So the next technique that we want to show you is how to make flower buds. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make some buds, the same as this package in here. So I've got if I open this. What have I used out of the packaging? This is our buttercup die set. So I'm using one of these large flower dies and I'm using one of this strange looking die here. So I am going to take two of these petals away. Well, I'm... Mm, Cut them away. Cut them away, do okay. I? Yes, why not? Be daring. So take them off and we're going to save them. So we're going to use them. Don't panic, we are going to use them. Let me just get those out of your way for you. So I'm going to take one of my large ball tools, just run it over the petals and curl them inwards. There we are. So I'm starting at the top, coming down to the bottom. Are you doing this on the back or the front of the card? I'm doing this on the back this time. Okay. Because this is going to be inside the petal. You're not going to see it. You're going to see the outside, which mm -hmm. will be the pretty side. Makes sense. So. I'm going to put those to one side. Do I want to curl them? No, I can mould the rest. The other two. So I'm just going to scribble on the top because I really want to break these fibres down because I want to move the paper. This is Classic Card 218 GSM I'm using. So what I'm going to do with these, I am going to curl the first petal in and I'm going to curl the second around it. So when you look down then we've got a little tube. So I we'll pop a little bit of glue on the outside. Don't need anything on the first bed and we're just going to hold those together. Can I give those to my, you my assistant, please? The three we're going to do is going to be a bigger circle. And the two petals then are going to sit in this, inside this one. So I'm just going to give us all the petals we do, just on the outer side. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue just on the outer side of the petals. So bring them all in. There's my first one. There's my second one coming in. And then my third one is going to go around the top. So you've almost got like a little triangle there. And I guess when you think about flowers, the petals go around each other, don't they? they? Do. So when you think they do. how a flower works, build your buds in the same exactly. way. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So then I'm going to pop this one then, that is going to sit right in the middle there. So we'll put a little bit of glue onto the bottom and that will sit right in the centre. So you can see, 
You can see the depth on the flower. You can see there's lots of petals in there. And that's the start of your bed. But when you think of a bed, it's got leaves wrapping around it. It's got the sepals that come around the bed. And that's what this is. Looks a bit of a weird flower, but that's because it's not a flower. So this one again, I'm going from the top and curling downwards. And I'm going on the back again of the die cut. There we are. So bring those down, curl the centre. Because this is going to wrap around my bed. And that bed is going to be enclosed in the middle. So we'll have some glue on the bottom. If you wanted to make a 3D arrangement of this, I would put a piece of wire through the bottom at this point. And then you can wrap that wire in ribbon and you can put it into a 3D arrangement. So pop that inside. A little bit of glue on each petal. I'm not gluing right to the top because I want to have a little bit of free motion there. And then just squeeze. They will overlap slightly. So if I turn on the side, you can see they will overlap slightly. But use the heat from your hands to mould it. There we go. And just keep going. And there is all my petals where I want them. If they don't go exactly where you want them, it's not an issue. Because it's a flower and it's never, and you're never going to get two the same like this. You can move them a little bit if they're not quite right. And that is your bed. That's as simple as it is. And then you can tuck these. Say I've got a bigger flower, um, if we pop that, I would tuck those underneath if I was doing a flower arrangement. And that is your little bed, as simple as it gets. Just two flower cuts and you're away. So now we're going to show you how to shape some small flowers. So this is where the tiny flowers that we add into all of our die sets are definitely going to come in to their own for you. So I have taken some very teeny tiny little flowers here and these are actually from our So Crafty Showcase die set. They, um, they all cut together so you cut all three sizes in one go which I think is gorgeous when you're cutting things that are this small. Absolutely. And you get three different sizes of petals with this. You can see we've got some medium ones there. Oh, they're so tiny. That is such a pretty set though, isn't it? It is, it is. And you were going to get such a lot of use out of it. Definitely. So I have done these two flowers with the same number of petals and the same size of petals, but you can see they have, hopefully, you can see they've turned out very differently. So one of them is slightly flatter, and then this one has a lot more depth and texture to it. But also with these flowers, you can just shape them as individuals and pop a little crystal drop into the center of them. And I think they look really great. They do. And these would be perfect when you need flatter flowers for cards. So as you can see here, we've got a lovely little arrangement of all of these flowers, but it doesn't add a lot of depth to this card. They are nice and flat. I'm going to show you if you're thinking about postage, mm. this is a good way to go. So I'm going to show you the two different ways that I have shaped these. So I'm going to start with smaller ball tools, funnily enough. So Alison has obviously used the very big ones and I'm definitely going to go in with the two smaller ones. So these two here. I'm going to start with the smaller of the large tools, if that makes any sense whatsoever. And I'm actually going to turn my large petals over and I'm just going to go around in a circle on the back, first of all. And I'm going to do that on all three of the large ones. So again, you can see it's starting to sort of cup that flower, give it some texture and break down some of those fibers. I'm going to do the same on the medium ones. Now it does start to get a little bit more difficult as they get smaller. As you can imagine, you don't have as much space <laughs> to work with. 
and you can definitely go a lot quicker as well. And the last one of those, and I'm not going to shape these just yet. So flip these back over. I'm going to show you first of all how we made the stacked one, and then from this shape, we are going to actually also end up with this one. So add in T dot of glue into, oh, not a bubble, just a <laughs> dot. And you might find that tweezers help here. It really depends on how uh, dexterous your fingers are. I'm going to try and go in with my nails today. So depending on the look that you want for your flower, you can offset your petals or you can line them up if you prefer. I'm going to try and offset them ever so slightly. So they're not in between. They are just slightly to the side of the ones below them. Give that a few seconds for the glue to dry and do the same. Put another dot of glue into the center. Take your next large petal. I think Again. this is definitely, the devil is in the detail, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Because these are that little bit extra special oomph to your projects I think and when you think of a bunch of flowers they're not all the same size they're not you know you're going to have larger blooms smaller blooms filler blooms you think mm. of um say a branch of gypsophilia you know you've yes. got those tiny little flowers yeah. on there even if you've got a bouquet of massive peonies you might have gyp in there as well yeah you want that different sizing try and think of a rounded set of flowers as yeah. well I think yeah so, you know, contrast these versus these. Obviously, they look completely different next to each other, but... They could know, be on the same project. They could though, well be. They? they could well be. I mean, even with these, if I... Mm -hmm. While you're waiting for them to dry. Yeah, sure. Look, we've got some teeny tiny rosebuds and daisies. And then we've got some bigger blooms in here. And that is just in one little vase. Yeah, exactly. So try and think if you are making a project that has lots of different flowers. Obviously, if you've got all of the same flower, you're probably going to want them to all be roughly the same size. Yeah. But if you're doing like a mixed arrangement, probably lots of different sizes are going to make that look better I for think you. So. so my first three large petals have now stuck nicely. So I'm going to add in my medium size one. So again, tiny little dots of glue. You might find your precision nozzle for your deluxe is going to help you here. But the card you just brought in, that would look so plain without those flowers. It would. It really would. So again, I'm just going to pop these down. And because this is vellum, I have cut this in vellum because it is softer and I want, I don't think this would work for this size in classic. Obviously, if you're just doing one layer. Yeah. You can shape that fine, yeah. but with this many layers, I think you would struggle with classic this small. It's too heavyweight, and that's very funny of me to say for a 216 GSM, yeah. it's too heavyweight for something. So, last one of those. I'm actually going to leave that just two of my medium size. I'm going to move on to my small petals now. But if you've got some pattern paper books there, <gasps> that would be lovely with They these. would be perfect yeah. as well, wouldn't they? So, add in. Oh, popping back into place. You might find using your ball tool actually to shimmy things into place will help here as well. Just help to uh, press down. And then one more little set of petals on the top. Hopefully you can actually see what I'm doing and not just my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is teeny tiny. So... I think that's was so lovely with this so pretty set though. It's got a fabulous array of flowers, hasn't mm -hmm. it? It's got your... Yeah, you've got these ones here. It's got your teeny of... tinies. Yep. Oh, let me come in there. Got your teeny tiny flowers here. Oh, over a bit more. There we go. But it's also got your coiled flower. We mm -hmm. talked about coiled flowers earlier. I think the beauty of a dye to make a coiled flower is they are all going to be the same size. You're not going to get big ones, short ones. So the pro 
you jewel drop for this one this is in um yellow iris just pop a little drop in the center jewel drop for this one this is in um yellow iris just pop a little drop in the center and the drop for this one this is in um yellow iris just pop a little drop in the center and leave it to dry this one this is in um yellow iris it into the mat give it a bit Beam. of put it in the center and just push it into the mat give it a bit Beam. of a center and just push it into the mat Give it a bit Be of ruthless. Yeah, and just push it into the mat. Give it a bit Be of ruthless. Yeah, give, just push it into the mat. Give it a bit Be of ruthless. Yeah, give it a bit. Push it into the mat. Give it a bit Be of ruthless. Yeah, give it a bit. Push it into the mat. Give it a bit Be of ruthless. Yeah, give it a bit of a squish. And then instead of that flat flower, you end up with this lovely little textured bloom that is going to look really pretty on your projects and i think even these they're not they're not going to add too much depth to no them. no so obviously not all they're not going to add too much depth to no them. no so obviously not all smell flowers are the same we've got a bunch of different ones around us but they are all going to work in very similar ways and again you can just layer them up you're going to use a lot less layers probably yes. with a small flower than you would yeah. with a bigger flower you're not going to want 10 layers on a little flower no probably not <laughs> but hopefully that's given you some ideas with small flowers as well so our next range of flowers is rolled flowers so take it away leo so I have found as many different rolled flower dyes as I could across the craft room. I've pulled these from everywhere. So we have the tightly coiled one that is in our So Crafty showcase. We've got these and um, a couple of these that are from our Give It A Twirl kit that yeah. we did um, last year, year before, a little while ago. Um, but these are slightly different. So you can see we have here some straight rolled flowers as well as some coiled rolled flowers. And we also have a sneak peek at a new die set that is coming out soon. Um, this is our Pretty Petals die set, and you can see that this is. I'm gonna. So I should have done that for you. You're fine. Four rolled flowers with all different. It's actually just four rolled flowers with all different shapes and designs so, on them. So, so cute. And it's the teeniest little dice that you've ever seen. Love it. And these all are going to give you very different flower shapes. So for example, these here are going to give you these lovely little, almost like crocuses or, what do you say, heliobores? Heliobore. Christmas rose. Christmas rose. And you can see these actually have little stamens built into the end of them. So you start rolling from this end to kind of give you this look. You've got obviously the flat coiled one that is going to give you a flat coil that's going to end up looking like this. So there's no shaping to the edge, it is just a very simple rolled flower. You've got then the coils that have the extra petaling on the outside and they're going to give you flowers with a little bit more texture like this. So you can see I've done these in vellum, I think vellum is generally my preferred... I I know, a little crinkle. Vellum is my preferred cardstock for most flowers I think at this point I just love the Very way they pretty. look and then different ones are going to give you different petal looks so this is from I'm just having a look I now. think it's that one. Oh, I think you might be right yeah, so depending on how you pull it out obviously this one is very tight so it's like a little flower bud this one is a lot more open so the more you tease out the petals once it's dried you're going to get a different look again Again, it depends on which cardstock you've mm -hmm. used. And then this one you can see is kind of a more wibbly, <laughs> I, I don't know how else to describe it, a wibbly coiled flower. And it that's reminds gonna... me of the t TV screen in the 70s. You know, oh, when they did yes. that wobbly oh, was it the Twilight Hour. Um, but that's going to give you slightly more shaped rolls on the edge of here. I'm hoping that you can see this because I know these are so tiny you can hopefully see that the petals kind of undulate around the outside so it gives you more of a petal look yeah if you have a straight edge it's going to be a very straight look whereas this is going to give you more of a petal dip and peak they're so so pretty all the rolled flowers though generally go together in exactly the same way so this is where you're going to be bringing in your quilling tool again so the one that we showed you earlier with your 
thicker end and your thinner end. And we did talk very briefly earlier about when you're rolling these types of flowers specifically, mm. that depending on which end you use is how your petals are going to lay themselves. So I've got two different die sets here. You can see this one has slightly wider petals. This one has slightly pointier. I've inked this one and I did this very simply um, just with a dauber. Again, bearing in mind you want more ink at the center of your flower, so towards the bottom, the straight edge and less ink at the top. And I have inked this on both sides because you will see both sides of yeah. the petals once this is done. So I'm going to start this one with the fat end and we're gonna see how this turns out. So I'm gonna slot my paper into here at the stamen end of the flower. And I'm just gonna start rolling this. And again, you want to try and keep the edge all together. So just keep rolling and rolling. And just keep it going and you can see here that my petals are falling fairly irregularly around the outside so we're not ending up with them all in one place so I think probably the fat end is the right choice for this one so just keep rolling them up it gives such a pretty effect but it also gives depth because you've got that band at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It gives depth to your flower, doesn't it? It also gives you a very nice anchor point to put it onto yes. your product because you've got it a does. nice flat base on this one. So once you get to the end, so you can see here I'm holding that little paper like disc at the bottom just on the end of there. I'm going to slide this off my quilling tool. Stay. I'm going to, with my other hand, oh, you need to be ambidextrous here completely. I'm going <laughs> to grab my hot glue gun and turn it on. So I can see that my petals here, they are fairly all on one side. So I'm actually going to ever so slightly let this go. I want this to uncoil a little bit because I want to try and manipulate it so that my petals move slightly more around the flower. That's better. I don't want them all to be in one place, basically. So once you're happy with that, pinch it tight again. And I'm just going to bend this little bit over the base, like that. It's like a little flap, it closes is. it off. Cut it in. So, peel it back, because I'm going to put hot glue into here and then close this over the top. And exactly the same as the um, foam around rolled flower that I did earlier, you want to get the glue so it's hitting all of the coils. You don't want any of them to be free, you don't want them to sort of pull out. Um, you want them to stay nicely coiled up together. Yeah, so you don't want it like a spring. No, definitely don't want that. But do be careful, obviously, using your hot glue. You don't want to end up with it on your fingers if you can possibly avoid it. Could you tweezers if you're a little bit Yes, nervous. if you are nervous about doing this, definitely, that is an option. If your fingers are not made of asbestos. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we are pretty well used to uh, hot glue on fingertips. So, turn the little flap over poke it into the glue, give it a few seconds to grab everything and harden slightly. It's just going to take a moment for that to go. And then you can sort of tease your petals out around your flower. And this is where you get to kind of shape it and make it look how you want you it to You could use look. your um, bone folder again with that yeah, one, couldn't you? Exactly. Paper creaser. So at this point, or you can just bend it around your finger if you don't even want to grab another tool out. You could bend it around um, a pen. Yes, so if you, you wanted could. to kind of go a nice round shape, you could do it around that as well. So there is... The or you first. could even do the edge of your scissors if you were really careful. Yeah, I remember how we used to do that with ribbon? Yeah, The plastic ribbon. ribbon. That's the one. So there is my first little rolled flower. I'm going to pop that to one side. I'm going to leave my glue gun here. I'm going to try this now with the smaller end just to see what different effect we get this time. So again, slot the paper in and we're going to start rolling this. Try and go a bit quicker this time. I love the fact the different things you can create just with paper though. So this is where we said earlier, depending on which side you use, you might find that all your petals end up in the wrong place. You can see my petals are literally in a stack here, which is not the look that I'm going to no. want. So for these ones, you are going to want to use the thicker end of your quilling tool to roll them up. And again, it's just give it a try. It's trial it. and error, isn't it? You've done it. You've done it. You can then go back in and roll it the other way. 
So let's have a look then at rolling some of these beautiful patterns that we have in front of us here. I'm going to take so pretty. eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'm going to go for this one. This one has the most going on, I think. <laughs> so again, I'm going to feed this into my little quilling tool in here and then just start rolling. And in exactly the same way, you want to try and keep the inner line. So this line here, all in a row on your quilling tool. Ideally, you want it to stay nice and flat across the bottom. Not the easiest thing to do because you are going around in a big circle. So uh, it might take a bit of practice, but that's okay. Are we planning your weekend here? Is this what you're going to be doing? Mm. Don't forget if you do have a little flower making day, tag us in your makes. I'd love to see the kind of flowers that yes. you've come up with and the different projects that you use them on. Hopefully you've got some inspiration from what's around us as well. We've got mm. so many we different the projects. Room. It's like a florist shop around <laughs> you. Have a little look. We've got wreaths here. Um, I've used a slate hanger and we put some flowers onto that. Uh, we've got a little vase of peonies there. We've got a wall hanging with sunflowers in. There's a little heart up the top there. Very, very pretty. What's behind me this side? Um, we've got the envelopes that we've had filled with flowers. You can see these behind me. That was the scent with love envelope. Absolutely. Right up the top there. I don't know whether you can see, I hope you can, it's a rocking horse. Mm -hmm. And obviously you can pick these up, you know in the the bargain stores, you can pick these up and just decorate them yourself. There's a lovely little wreath behind me up above my head. And I think this may be Shilpa, she's even made flowers out of our iridescent Miri card. So never be afraid to try. Try the different uh, mediums that you've got in your crafty box. See what papers you've got. See what other things you've got. Like you've mm -hmm. used tulle today. We've used felt today. If we, you know, if we were fabric crafters, then we could have done some fabric as well. But I'm <laughs> but not a fabric not. crafter. No. So I've finished and now that my little flower I've put open ever so slightly because this has a lot of little petals on the outside. I want them to kind of tease it open ever so slightly because this has a lot of little petals on the outside. I want them to be free enough to open yeah. and it's not going to do that if it's too tightly coiled. So sort of going backwards on yourself at this point and almost unraveling it but not completely. But again because this is vellum it's holding itself quite nicely it isn't immediately unraveling which is good. So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to hold the base, open up my little closing flap, pop some hot glue onto here again making sure that I've got some on all of those coils. Try not to get any strands if I can avoid it. Close there's it over the edge. There's always a one strand. Oh, isn't there's there? always one. So hold that into place just for a moment. And then you can start sort of teasing your little petals out and actually opening this back up again. That reminds me of a little daisy. Mm. It's so pretty, so delicate. And then obviously where it's very tightly coiled in the center, you've got sort of the center of the flower, almost the bud part if it's part way open. Mm -hmm. And then you've got all of your little petals around the outside. So that one is a petaled one. And then the last one I will do is just a very simple, straight coiled flower, the classic. And this ends up looking like a little rose basically. So again, keep your coil nice and tight. Keep that bottom in line as much as you possibly can. You might find it does slip. If you want, you can put a fingernail at the bottom, try and hold it if that helps, or add a finger on top, stop mm -hmm. it spooling off the top of your quilling tool, whichever way it works for you. That one takes, it's not so, it's quicker doing that one, isn't yes. it? Because you don't have to put so much thought into it, it just goes. It just goes. Exactly. 
So last little bit. It always gets a bit tricky at the end, but that's fine. Pull you it off. You're not lining up any petals and things. No. And you can see with classic card, it does unspool itself a lot easier than say the vellum does. But I like that because it means it'll open up quite nicely mm. for you. So again, I'm going to turn over, pull open the little flap at the bottom. Nope, stay there. <laughs> Don't go. Don't go. Tiny little bit of glue going down into there. Close that over there. Turn it right way up so the glue doesn't pour down into my finger. And just hold it for a second while that all grabs. And there is my lovely little rolled flower rose. Just like that. And you can see that all of these have been done with the same dye. Doesn't matter what colour they are, it just depends on how much. But they have all come out looking exactly the same. Obviously it just depends on how much you allow it to open as to how big it's going to look. So this is why we would say that using a mm. dye is going to give you a more consistent finish than cutting them by hand. So we have one little bonus tip for you when you are having a play day making some flowers and this has come from our design team. So if you are inking your flower die cuts, their recommendation is that you ink your flowers onto a plain piece of white card. So you can see here, they've obviously moved the flowers cutouts around as they have been inking them. I think it might be those actually, looking at the colors that we've got here. Yeah. So as you're inking your die cuts, change where they are on your piece of paper, keep inking them up and moving them around. Once you're done then, you have a lovely coordinating background that you can use on any project that you want to use with these flowers. So imagine this is the background of your card with a few of these little flowers on the front and a sentiment and what a gorgeous project that would end up making. So a really nice little bonus. So pretty. So I pretty. I hope that gives you a little bit of inspiration as well. So hopefully this has given you lots of ideas and inspiration and some really good techniques on how to build, shape and create your paper craft flowers. Don't forget if you do make any of these flowers or any flowers with any of our dyes, tag us in your makes. We are across social media at Tonic Studios and you can also use the hashtag show tonic. We'd love to see what you're making, the projects that you come oh, up with, absolutely. all of your inspiration and your ideas when it comes to paper craft flowers and I can't wait to see them. Fill the Facebook group. Yes. Fill it with flowers. Ready for spring. I'd yes. love to see that. Yes. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell. Ding. And then you won't miss any new video that we post or when we go live on the channel, which does happen quite often as well. And don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have crafty friends, bring them into the Tonic community. We would love to have mm. you with us crafting along enjoying the journey Absolutely. that we are all on together. So thank you very much for joining us today and we hope to see you again very soon. Happy crafting. Bye.